In April this year, I participated in Kula's projects at the Technopolis in Mechelen. It's an event where kids present their science and technology projects to the public and the panel of judges. And the coolest projects can win prizes. I made a car, but not just a car. I presented a concept around a building kit, the cool kit. And it was aimed at teaching kids of my age how to build and code using Arduino. I designed this kit because I myself wanted to learn how to make these cool things. But the learning material available was either aimed at younger children, or it was just a building box that told me exactly how to follow each step. And you don't end up learning much from that. And I like understanding how things work, and when the things I do make sense. So, I decided to design my own kit and give the other kids a chance to learn something new in a more fun way. For example, instead of it just telling you how to connect the motors to the driver board, it would show you an example line of code and tell you exactly what all the different parts mean. Then, it would challenge you to adapt that code to match whatever it is that you put together. Of course, it had to be a cool car. So, I experimented with lots of different things, and I worked on the project for a very long time. Now, I'm definitely not a genius, and I don't know everything about electronics. So, some of the car was built with parts that I hadn't used before. When I tested my project for the very last time, which was only two days before the final event, those parts failed. My car literally went up in flames. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't burn our house down, but <laughs> I didn't have enough time or knowledge to fix it. My car was ruined, and the day ended in an epic fail and a mental breakdown. I couldn't go to the event. For some people, that could have been the end of their story, and their TED talk. But I'm here for a reason, so let's talk about that. There's a question that must be asked about my story. Is why did I push the boundaries that ended up wrecking my car? I could have played it safe with a little car and a couple of flashing LEDs, but I didn't. That's because I'm a very curious person, and I like to try new things. That's the answer right there. But let's elaborate on my curiosity. Because I'm curious, I can't just look at one thing forever. I explore different subjects and areas within those subjects to constantly find new things to learn. If I work on the same thing for too long, I tend to stop learning, and I end up repeating what I already know. Of course, that results in me getting bored, and looking for something new to learn, a fresh stream of information flowing into my brain. Now, let's call that process skimming. What I call skimming is jumping from one subject to another, so you never run out of new information. The result of skimming is that I tend to never dive deep into a single subject. And that is often frowned upon when people ask me, What's your passion? Or what do you want to do when you grow up? And I say, oh, I don't know. I like a lot of things. And then I go on about all the different things that I find interesting. However, those people think that you need one passion to succeed. You have to find what your passion is as soon as possible and just focus on that for the rest of your life. There's even a saying that goes, curiosity killed the cat. It basically means that curiosity is a bad thing, and it won't get you anywhere. But a very smart person thought of a response to the saying, and it changes it to, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. <laughs> and this actually refers to a hormone called dopamine, 
also known as a happy hormone. And your brain produces it when you learn something new. As a reward, it makes you feel happier and satisfied. So actually, learning new things makes you happy. And therefore, I don't think skimming is a bad thing to do. By skimming, I've collected a lot of information. But it's a big jumbled up mess of different things. I've spent my years on this earth gathering random information. Has that done me any good? Yes, because I've created an overview in my head of all the different subjects that I've seen and explored up to now. And I can look at this subject, at the, oh, at the overview, <laughs> and see which subjects are bigger. These are the ones that I've spent more time on, or I understand a bit more, or maybe I simply feel a connection with it. And these subjects stand out for a reason. They tell me that this is a subject that I enjoy, and that I could possibly dive so deep into that I might want to stick with it. And I've only found these subjects because I've skimmed. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't dislike people who've had a passion from the start. In fact, I think those people are still very important. They are the ones that have control over a subject, and they actually know what they're doing. For example, I know a guy who knows everything there is to know about the tubes inside Toyota cars. And without him, we wouldn't have Toyota cars with such nice tubes in them. People who have a passion like that, they can take control, while they give others some more time to follow a more wobbly journey to discover who they are. Now, remember when I told you the story about the car that I made that died? Leading up to building that car, I've followed a very wobbly journey. In fact, I experimented with so many different things that I ended up having a lot of stuff that didn't burn down. When eventually I pulled myself and all those things together, I was able to go to the event. I presented my car and all the ideas around it. And guess what? I won a prize. <laughs> now, Okay. <laughs> so, the prize I got wasn't a charity for the poor kid whose car burnt down. But it was a prize for the kid who had an awesome project and was able to make a presentation that was so good, it didn't even matter that the car wasn't working. In fact, most of the judges didn't even realize that the car wasn't actually working. <laughs> On that note, I have a message for you. For all the parents, the teachers, the bosses, basically all the adults, is let us fail. Let us fail so we can learn from our own mistakes. Don't just feed us the solution when we start to flunk, but let us figure it out by ourselves. Let us live and learn, and we will achieve great things. Thank you.